entamoeba histolytica <clears throat> now talking about entamoeba entamoeba histolytica this is a, a, a very important one so remember entamoeba histolytica is worldwide in distribution but more common in the tropical and subtropical countries so in the tropical and subtropical countries this is most importantly you know present okay distribution is there <clears throat> and the one thing which is very important is the habitat of it the habitat is in the large intestine so where is the habitat of entamoeba histolytica that is in the large intestine large intestine remember now talking about entamoeba histolytica before coming into the other you know um, other points of entamoeba there are something which you need to know about the morphological form so basically the parasite exits in three morphological forms one is a trophocyte other one is a pre cystic stage and the other one is lastly we have the cyst trophozoite pre cyst and cyst these are the three things okay now remember that the trophocyte is in the vegetative form or growing or the feeding form vegetative form growing or the feeding form okay now it uh, i'll give you one uh, a slight information this one measures around 18 to 40 micrometer 18 to 40 micrometer okay now talking about uh, there, there uh, sometimes they give 18 to 40 or even there is another one they say that there is an average of 20 to 30 micrometer that in that is in diameter okay now this is about trophozoite so it is a vegetative form uh, otherwise it is a growing or the feeding form okay now this one will be having pseudopodia this is having a pseudopodia now what is pseudopodia we already have learned even in our you know school days also uh, pseudopodia is nothing but a long finger like projections of the ectoplasm into which the endoplasm you know follows or flows so that was about pseudopodia so trophocyte will be having a pseudopodia okay and they will be a cartwheel nucleus cartwheel nucleus that is a speciality of trophozoite remember a cartwheel nucleus okay and in acute cases trophocyte will be having or we can see trophocyte with ingested rbcs trophocyte trophozoite with ingested rbcs so this is the a little information about the trophozoite next one coming to the pre cystic stage now the measurement of pre cystic stage is 10 to 20 micrometer 10 to 20 micrometer in diameter okay 10 to 20 micrometer in diameter okay now the nucleus now has the same kind of feature like that of the trophozoite but what here we should remember is the trophozoite extrudes food vacuoles and they round up that is what you need to remember a little difference between a trophozoite and a precyst okay so this is about precystic stage now lastly what we have is a cystic stage <clears throat> or a cyst in which once again i'll tell you the measurement that is 10 to 15 micrometer in diameter and cyst is actually surrounded by a highly refractile membrane and that is called cystic wall cystic wall this is a <clears throat> highly refractile membrane okay highly refractile membrane okay now uh, coming to cyst so once again i'll tell you 10 to 15 micrometer uh, then it is spherical spherical in nature that is round then the cystic wall will be having a refractile no, I mean, cystic wall is otherwise known as a refractile membrane now the nucleus structure is again similar to that of the trophozoite remember the uh, nucleus structure is again uh, similar to that of the trophozoite but we have different differentiated the cyst into a early cyst and a mature cyst in the early cyst what we can see is a <clears throat> single nucleus or you can say uninucleate uh, uninucleate and a binucleate body now what will happen they will be a glycogen mass they will be a chromedial body and they will be aggregates of ribosomes this chromedial body is nothing but the aggregates of the ribosomes that will be present in the early stage okay so once again i'll tell you the cyst will be having into two forms that is a early 
and one is a mature. In the early, there will be a single nucleus, there will be glycogen mass as well as chromedial bodies. Chromedial bodies are nothing but the aggregates of ribosomes. Okay, but in case of a mature one, that the wise we can call it to be a quadrinucleate. Quadrinucleate, in this stage, they will not be a glycogen mass. The glycogen mass and the chromatoid bars or the bodies will disappear. So there is a quadrinucleate and the mature form of the cyst. So two forms, one is the early and the mature form. So this was about the morphological forms of uh, entamoeba hysteritica, prophozoite, free cyst and cyst. Now coming to a little other information, this is the third leading parasite cause of morbidity. Now, if at all there is a uh, <clears throat> there, if there uh, and if at all there is a question that which is the leading, the third leading parasite, parasitic cause of morbidity, your answer should be Entamoeba histolytica. But if the question is the most leading parasitic cause of morbidity, if there is malaria, your answer should be malaria. If there is no option of malaria, then there should be cystosomiasis. If it is there, tick on it. Or if both are not there, and then if there is entamoeba histolytica, your answer should be entamoeba histolytica. Okay, so three. The first one is the malarial parasite or malaria. Second one is cystosomiasis. And the third leading is entamoeba histolytica. Now, if at all the question is, the leading parasitic cause of morbidity. And under that, you have the first option, malaria, second option, cystosomiasis, and third option, entamoeba histolytica. Your answer should be malaria and not the other two. So please note it down, these two. Okay, there is a doubt by uh, Dr. Nirmala talking about the movements. The movements of these is by using pseudopodia. Now, what we have learned even in our school days uh, is that this amoeba and all, they will be having uh, the, uh, their, you know, cytoplasm. They move with the cytoplasm, the, their particular, in a, I'll show you in a picture format, okay? If at all, this is a particular cell. Now, what, if at all they have to move this side, what they do is they project one particular part of the cell and then they move towards it. Okay, the locomotion of that amoeba is due to a sole gel conversion of the protoplasm within its cell. So uh, it will move and then subsequently what will happen, the other uh, cytoplasmic and the other you know, fluid in the cell also will move. And thus the placement moves like that. That is with the help of pseudopodia, pseudopodia. Now that is the same thing which I had mentioned under the clinical forms. You can see over here, pseudopodia is present. Even in case of pre cyst, also pseudopodia will be present. So these are the uh, way how the amoeba moves. Okay. So next one, what I want to tell you in Entamoeba histolytica is about the mature quadrinucleate cyst. The mature quadrinucleate cyst is the infective and the diagnostic form. Infective and the diagnostic form. So the, uh, if at all, the question is, what is the infective and the diagnostic form of entamoeba histolytica? Without any doubt, your answer should be quadrinucleate cyst, quadrinucleate cyst. You can see the mature form, I already said, there is a quadrinucleate without the glycogen mass and the chromedial body. So your answer should be uh, quadrinucleate cyst. Now coming to it, what is the virulence factor of entamoeba histolytica? Now, talking about the virulence factor, there is a particular kind of amoebic lectin which is present. Amoebic lectin. Okay. Now, this will help in the addition to the intestines. And that is why there is a, uh, you know, later on there will be a problem. So, uh, amoebic lectin is the virulence factor. So, answer of the virulence factor in case of entamoeba histolytica is amoebic lectin. Okay. Amoebic lectin. I hope there is no doubt regarding uh, a little introduction about entamoeba histolytica.